he looks lower class, definitely. And if he's not, then he's certainly trying to look lower class. Um, blue collar. Yeah, it's plaid shorts. Lower middle class. Something about the screen door behind him. Pitiful. <laughs> lower class. Oh. I mean, look how high his pants are. Oh, my God. Like, he don't get... Wait a minute. I'm sorry. No offense. <laughs> Something he would do. Upper class. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. Look like he's the CEO of some business. The country club set. The picture of smugness. The stereotypical my family was rich. I got the money after they died. Now we're happily ever after. Yeah. They don't really look that happy though. When you wish upon a star makes no difference. basically against the American principle to belong to a class. So naturally Americans have a really hard time talking about the class system because they really don't want to admit that the class system exists. But the reality is it does. And sometimes it's based on looks and popularity. Sometimes it's based on money. And sometimes it's based on how big your house is or where your daddy works or if your mother came out at, you know, the the, the infirmary ball in New York City, there are all kinds of measures of class in America. Fate steps in and sees you through. Somehow it's reassuring, I, to me anyway, to live in a house that I've been in all my life and knowing that, um, you know, my forebears lived here too. This is uh, John Armstrong, the fellow who built the house in uh, General's uniform, the War of 1812. Over here is his wife, the former Alida Livingston. She had the money, he didn't have any money. This is Sam Ward here, who's my great-great-grandfather. Have a look at him. Oops, there's a veil today. I wouldn't drive a Volvo. Volvo is plumpish, middle-aged, middle-class woman, too many children, an uncontrolled dog. I certainly wouldn't drive a Ford. It's probably stolen. Like a bolt out of the blue. I love for a salesman to show up on a job, hit a suit. <laughs> he never comes to my job again in a suit, you know? I've demanded to take, take their damn tie off and their jacket off when they're talking to me. And they do. The sweet fulfillment of kind of preppy. Yeah, she's preppy, the one in the blue. He's dorky. Or loser. He was just preppy. His shoes are kind of like dorky, they're kind of like um, not in style and stuff. He's ghetto. These people come up our dorks. America is a nation of tribes, and every American is a member of at least one of them. Are you proud to be called a redneck? Oh hell yeah! I, oh hell yeah! <laughs> when you get a when you get a when you get a full fledged redneck to say oh hell yeah, he really means that. You know what I mean? I've been born and raised here. They're the people we live amongst, the people who have similar backgrounds to ours, the people we feel most comfortable with. 
there's definitely a, a level of people who have uh, attained a lot of success in different uh, fields of endeavor here. Financial markets, and uh, different businesses, and venture capital, dot com businesses. And like high fashion and finance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty much that. it. Fashion, fashion and finance. And finance. We are the union! We are the union! Mighty, mighty union! Our tribes can be defined by what we do, or how much we make, and also by our opportunities and aspirations. Um, here's Banks again. Mm -hmm. Here we are. Right here. That's on Duclin Street, looks like. In my particular case, my father would always say, whatever you choose to do, just try to be the best at it. Wow. That's what my father used to say. So I'll support you in whatever you do, right? as long as it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> as we move through life, we separate ourselves, often unconsciously, from people who don't fit in our group who don't fit in our social class. To me, there's some people who just, they could just have a bathing suit on the beach and I'd know they didn't belong. Didn't belong? Yeah, Ooh, well, to work. a certain class. No, no, I don't mean didn't belong on this earth, but I mean just. <laughs> in fact, America is a country divided by class, split into a thousand different social distinctions. The kind of neighborhood you live in, how far you got in school, the type of food you eat, the way you wear your hair. Class is everywhere, yet it's often hard to see. I grew up in a small town, and the people who lived on the hill were the rich people and the most powerful people and the most respected people and the most prestigious people. And the people who lived at the bottom of the hill on the other side of the tracks were the know-nothings and the do-nothings, and that's how they were regarded. It's a hard thing to acknowledge, because if there are social classes, well, then there must be kinds of inequality that you can't explain very easily, you know, that just keep perpetuating themselves. A generation ago when you sent your kids to private school was because you didn't like black people. And now when you send your kids to private school, it's because you don't like poor people. It's all about class. It's all about, I want my kid to go to school with the right kinds of people so that he can get into Harvard or, God forbid, because he's not that smart, which is usually the case, He'll get into one of those schools with one of those names, like, you know, Sarah something or William something or some one of those schools. We're, we'll get you in. We'll get them in. Give us some money. We'll get them in. But um, it's all about class. Now we're going down into the dining room. I think this is where your own personal sense of taste comes in very, very much. And here we are in the dining room with uh, Ben's grandfather, um, Benjamin Jr., Benjamin Griswold Jr., uh, it sort of gives me pause because Ben's looking more and more like him every day. <laughs> In this divided world, where do you fit on the spectrum of class and privilege? What group are you a part of? How have your own class attitudes shaped your life? Tuscany had an influence on us. Southern Italy, too. The feel maybe of an old French country kitchen or an English farmhouse English kitchen. Farmhouse, yeah. yeah, that's and, and that's we incorporated a lot of those things in in the feel of this. I think we tried to anyway. It's a Mitsubishi uh, 50 inch, 60. I'm sorry, 60 inch TV. Uh, we originally got it because we had a <clears throat> a person in this house used to come here to visit us. She was shorter than the TV, so I. That would have been a great comparison. Looking at class differences reveals basic things about Americans, about our hopes, our fears, our prejudices. In the great game of social class, we're all players. Nouveau riche, cell phone, house in the suburb, kids maybe in a public school only if it's good, private school otherwise, uh, vacation in the winter, vacation in the summer, uh, when you got it, baby, flaunt it, so they flaunt it and let you know all about it. Lots of jewelry, maybe a boat, whatever it takes. I'm rich now, pay attention to me. 